Well, hello folks, I'm L.A. Little and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets and we do it from neoclassical perspective each time. We ask ourselves what happened today and what might it tell us about the coming ones. I do this show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. And archived on YouTube under the channel L.A. Little if you want to catch it there. As far as today, we actually have something a little bit different than what we've seen recently. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on that today. Uh, I may not have much time for questions as a result, but before we get to that, let's review the numbers and then let's look at the charts. Um, so let's see here, number-wise. We actually had the Dow up today, 10 points, up 0.5%, 0.6%, 0.06, I should say. Uh, the S&Ps were down a point and a half. Uh, the composite, the NDX, those got hit. That was off of Apple. We're going to talk about Apple tonight. 24 down, 25 down. Finally, uh, more of a two-sided type trade coming in here. Russell uh, down two points, uh, 0.18. Gold actually was up about half a percent. Uh, silver was up just slightly. And the dollar was pretty much flat. Oil popped up 2%, up 76 cents. So, oh, and bonds. Bonds also flipped back around up a half a percent today after getting drubbed yesterday. As far as the indexes and what they look like, uh, let's zero in on those to begin with here and get a feel for what's happening. S&P 500 goes over yesterday's high, back underneath it. We have had an extended move. Slightly less volume, just slightly. That is a two bar reversal. That says that at best this should go sideways tomorrow, at worst actually retrace. That's the S&P. If you look at the Dow, the Dow actually went up and tested this July 17th high again. That high versus today's high, about a third less volume on today's high. Got over it, back under it, that's a test failure again at the highs, that also says it should try to retrace. So you've got the Dow, you've got the NDX, both of them saying the same sort of thing, excuse me, the S&P saying the same sort of thing, and that is, is that we should see them try to retrace tomorrow. Now, the, the, the fireworks today was in the NASDAQ, and that's because of Apple. Slightly heavier volume today than yesterday over back under. It's not a two bar as a result Could go back and test, but I suspect it probably won't right away But it is slightly higher volume and it could go back and test But I suspect it won't as a result of Apple Which we'll look at here in a few minutes if we go to the Russell the Russell actually met that target. Remember, it had 1183 on the target for the ABCD, bullish ABCD, went right to it, flipped around, comes back down, presses back the other way, and it also had less volume, just slightly. That also is a two-bar reversal. S&Ps, two-bar. Russell, two-bar. Dow Jones, test failure at the highs. NDX, over-under. The index is all suggesting it's going to be very hard to go back up tomorrow. And we know that tomorrow we got Draghi doing his, his thing. He's going to be on before the market's open. And he's pretty much probably going to set the tone for what's going to happen tomorrow. And it's, it's going to be an interesting one because so far these markets have totally moved against all the geopolitical that's been going on and been unwilling to pull back even for that. As you can see here with the Russell, even the weakest of the indexes, even though it's had pushes back to the downside, right, you can see this just, you know, parallel type channel action going straight up. And a lot of technicians will look at this and say, okay, it's still bullish because of that. Well, of course, we do things a little bit differently here. And we're giving you an early indication that this probably isn't going to hold and we're going to see a pullback. But you can see 
every time it's tried to pull back, it just jumps right back up, right? You see it one here, another one here. Every time it tries to pull back, it spikes back up the other way, and it's done that all the way up. That looks like it's going to change, and it's probably going to change as a result of uh, what is transpiring that is different, and that is is that up until now, and actually almost every time this, this time of the year comes around, Apple is the go-to trade. And what I mean by that is, is there's a, you know, they always have their, their announcements around, you know, first, second week of September. And when they do that, they take and bring out their new products, right? And inevitably, you get a huge run up into that news event and then they sell the news. Well today they sold it a week early. That news is coming out next Tuesday. Today's Wednesday. Samsung came out, upended them, and you may see an announcement from Google as well prior to Apple doing their thing. Volume comes out of this guy. Big spike down you know, loses, uh, what did it lose, 4% today or something? 4.22. So, big spike down. It's coming back into support. Support is off of this bar. You can see the volume escalation here with respect to, you know, this bar versus that one, right? Huge escalation in volume as you're coming back into the top of this. I suspect Apple's going to make a beeline for this area. Uh, it maybe gets a slight bounce tomorrow, but it's gonna it's gonna travel right down there. As a matter of fact, if you're bullish, you want to see it hit it tomorrow, and you want to see volume just dry up. Uh, I don't know if that will happen, uh, but that is the scenario. And I'm gonna come back to Apple a little bit later because I want to talk about volume off the top. So I'll save that for a little bit later. I want to move over now to the rest of the world. We're showing problems the rest of the world is suggesting there are no problems. Although tomorrow it's all about Draghi and we'll see what Draghi wants to do. I'm going to flip, kind of flip through these real quick and just show you the bullishness around the world. All ordinaries pressing against highs. India just made new highs with the doji. Brazil testing the highs. Even France, now we go to Europe, even France trend transitions today over a swing point high and has volume. Remember we'd already changed the sideways now we get a push up. This one actually looks like it wants to go higher and this one actually you know if you look at it this and, and my good friend Charles Kirk would look at this and say okay we got ourselves a cup and a handle right he loves this pattern. The handles maybe not as long as he wants but you know that's an attempt to break it. You got Draghi tomorrow, I'm not sure this is going to break, but that is a good sign for that particular market. The fact that it's pushing up there and it actually had volume expansion today. And I'm sure, you know, tomorrow's going to be a big tell on this one because I'm sure some of that was short covering today. The DAX. Now the DAX is just pushing into the retest region off this low. Doesn't have the volume. That one actually still looks like it's going to fail now that it's up there. FTSE presses to the highs, gets over them, back under them. Slight failure, but on the weekly, you know, this has pressed up and is testing all the highs on the weekly. And it looks like it's going to have as good of or maybe better volume with the exception of maybe uh, uh, the January 20th bar of 2013. So... Europe, not too bad. And then we come back to the state side. Here's Toronto, new highs. Pop over to China, eight shares, new highs. Volume blows out the top. Hong Kong, new highs. Volume comes in again. Right? So it's hard to see. And here's the Nikkei, new highs, fails and comes back, but it has volume. I mean, the only ones you can look at, there's only two or three of these that are not pressing new highs. Taipei, you know, Indonesia is not pressing new highs yet. Uh, Korea is not pressing new highs. 
But other than that, you're pretty hard pressed to find anything overseas that looks bad. Domestic wants to trade two sided for a while. World wants to trade higher. Again, tomorrow, Draghi, ECB. That's going to be the tell in the morning. They, they've run that one up into the news. If he doesn't deliver QE tomorrow or tell you for sure that it's coming, I suspect they're going to sell it back down. If I look at the sectors, and I'm actually looking through all of these tonight because you know we have mixed signals between us and the rest of the world. If I look at the sectors, I've got the IYT pressing up over the top. It's an over under though. The SOX is still hanging at the highs, hasn't given it up. XLE actually was up today, but it was an inside bar even on a 2% spike in oil. XLB actually fell at the highs one more time with less volume. XLF, a two bar reversal as it went over the highs, right? You go over and back under after an extended move, that's a two bar reversal. The XLI is still hanging, but it actually starting to look like it's going to try to come back in. The XLK, as you would imagine, fell today, had slightly more volume, but failed, came off. That left volume. Um, well, it's not really volume at the top because it's not enough, but it went over back under. And let me see, what was the other one? So XLV has got a kind of an ugly doji at the top, but this one's still extending. That one hasn't given it up yet. XLY does a two bar reversal as well. So if you look at them as a group, there's more negative than there is positive as well. That seems to reflect what the indexes domestically are reflecting. And lastly, to wrap this up, if I look, of course, EEM is going to have broken out, and it did, although it's kind of an ugly finish. XLE, excuse me, the, the uh, FXE, the, the UUP, trying to bounce a, li a little bit in front of the ECB, but nothing major there yet. Gold, reversal, comes back up. This is um, actually kind of interesting because gold now has pulled back above the low. You know, we're looking at this low here for the week. This is a key test. It's going under back over now. It's not going to have any volume comparatively, right? If it holds here, it's going to be it's going to be an under over. It's going to be a failed test basically of a breakdown attempt. If it holds. We don't know if it's going to hold yet. That will be Friday. And then if we look at bonds, bonds actually got under back over again today. They held on the retest regen. It's the only one that did. All the others you know, blew, out, blew it out yesterday. But the long end of the curve is still holding. Doesn't want to give it up yet. So in summary, domestic, trying to pull back. Looks like it's going to try to pull back tomorrow. Overseas, all they can see is blue sky, so they want to go higher. ECB reports to us tomorrow. Unless Draghi, again, I'll repeat it, unless Draghi tells us that there's going to be QE and it's going to be soon, I suspect these markets are going to be disappointed on that news. All right, I want to go back to, uh, so that's kind of the summary. I want to go back to Apple, and I want to talk about volume off the top and what it means. I had a good question today emailed to me. Uh, and, and, you know, as a reminder here, you know, I do take your questions. Uh, you can text them to me, 303-912-9110. You can mail them to me, support at tatoday.com. That was how I got this one earlier today. Uh, you can also... Uh, you can also, of course, type into the live stream window and uh, I'll take your questions there. Let's pop back over to Apple and I want to talk about Apple because, you know, Apple is a huge weighting in these indexes. Uh, matter of fact, it is the largest weighting in the NDX. It's almost 20, you know, I haven't looked it up in the last few weeks, but it's about 23, 24%. So a quarter of the whole index rests on one stock. So where goes Apple, you know, so goes Apple, so goes the market. And what I wanted to talk about here is the fact that there's different ways for volume to come out of a stock. 
And as I was talking about earlier, you know, this has been a money machine every year into that September meeting. In other words, they start running it up anywhere from July on. And if you go back and look, let me pull up a last year's chart. If you go back and look here, here's the run up into the meeting here, right? Spikes up as it comes into September, then it sells off, right? And it's done that almost every year. So what do you do? You, you just grab this thing and you run with it. And especially, you know, once it got, gave a couple of pullbacks here on the weekly, you know, that was the place that people could step in and actually do some buying. And expect that they'd get another four days out of this thing on the way up. Well, today they didn't, and that's why the volume came out so heavily. The volume here on the weekly, uh, 2.75. That was up 3% from the week prior. Uh, that volume there is 275. You're coming back 178. This is a short week. We only have two days so far, and we're already doing 178. So we're going to blow away that volume as we come back into this top bar. That price point is 97.88. I expect it's going to try to bounce from there. And we'll see that here when I flip back to the daily. But notice on the weekly, this thing can come all the way back to 80 just to find good support. You know, just to find a willing supply of buyers, right, on the weekly, on that time frame. So in other words, Apple could come down a long way before it finds support. Now, on a shorter term time frame, of course, support is going to exist off this large bar. Top of that guy's 97.88. You're coming into it. You're probably going to hit it. I would think you could hit it as easy early as tomorrow, because anybody who was in this today, you know, got the plug pulled on them, and so you just had two weeks of price taken away. Matter of fact, if you bought these highs back here, you're back to even five weeks later. Volume off the top. Let's take that and talk about what it is. So you have a high here and the high on the very next day is not as high or higher than the prior day so in other words this high volume bar is not at the highs if you have it at the highs you know let's just make make believe here if this bar was up here for example you know it would be at a higher high that would be volume at the highs even though it comes off, it would be volume at the highs. And that would say, hey, this thing's probably going to want to get tested again at some point. When you have volume coming off the highs, A, it doesn't have to get tested again. B, it says more than likely you have put in your top on this time frame. So the suggestion here is that you will go probably three more months before you hit that high again. That's the suggestion. Now, I know I'm saying that, and that's a big statement with Tuesday being their announcement. For all I know, they're going to come out with some you know, whiz-bang product, and everybody's going to be uh, you know, all salivating and wanting to buy it again. This says they're not going to... This says they're not going to make new highs off of it. And matter of fact, if we pull this over and put it on the weekly, excuse me, on the monthly, if I grab the monthly and pull it up, if you look at the highs back here, you know, after the split, it's 100.72. 100 Today's high, or this week's high is 103. Right now we're trading at 98. So we're actually underneath that high now. We got over it with a suspect breakout. We're doing an immediate retest, regenerate on the monthly. When you do that, that's about a 50-50 probability, whether it's going to hold or not. Where can it trade back down to? Well, more than likely, it's going to trade to the bottom of that and do a full retest and try to regenerate higher. That bottom is 93.71. So on Apple, I would expect that you're going to see 93.71 before you see those highs again. So that's one thing to realize. 93.71 is going to bring you down into this area, right? Underneath this low, 
And if we look at it on the weekly, 93.71 is going to bring you back down into this area. These bars, you see all these bars lined up. Let me just draw a line across there. This looks like the area it's going to try to come back to. And that's just the first retrace, more than likely. So that's Apple. That's volume off the top. That's what it means. If you look at it on a weekly, because you're not going to have huge volume, you're not going to leave volume at the top on the weekly. And that's probably going to be true on the monthly as well by the time the monthly's done. Uh, we'll see, but it doesn't look like it's going to leave volume at the top. Um, if volume continues to expand, then of course it would be a different story. So that was, um, it was a good question. I wanted to explain what it means and how you, you know, what's the difference between volume off the top versus volume at the top. You know, in my books, um, there is a discussion in this book, there is a discussion of these concepts. Uh, you can read it there if you have the book. As far as um, where to go from here, well, I guess the thing I would probably do is, is realize that we've had a long push higher. Every time you get these, you have to be aware of when and where the thing is going to transition on you because they don't go up forever and they certainly don't go up at this type of an ascending angle, right? This, this type of an ascent. It's, it's just not possible to keep going. So what you should suspect is that this thing eventually will come back and will test here again and try to break down this high and get underneath it. The, the normal place you would expect support, the TA Today charts show you it's another, what is that, 30 points down or so, or not quite, maybe 25 points down. That, and that's on the shortest time frame. So I would expect that, you know, if we get a retrace, you're going to see it retrace down into this area. Now, we had just seen potentially ABCD structure setting up on the upside. And it's actually from here up. And that extends a long way. That's true here, it's true on the NASDAQ, it's true on the NDX. So if this market can just hang into this area here, right, if it just hangs in this area for the next two weeks or so and consolidates, then what looks like may be something more bearish can turn into something more bullish. I mean, we have seen the market hold higher and push higher even with Apple declining. I mean, it is possible. So you can't just assume Apple's going to take the whole market down. It will be a drag, it will be an anchor, but it, nece it doesn't necessarily mean the market will come down because on the flip side of this, the economics have been looking pretty good. PMIs have come out again. They came out yesterday. Last night, that's what drove China so high, was PMIs there better than expected. So economically, the numbers haven't looked bad. And this market, you know, in the end, it runs on fundamentals. If corporations can make more money, then prices can go higher. That is what drives it in the end. These charts are but a reflection of that and a reflection of the emotions and expectations of what is to come. So, so you know, we don't want to get too bearish. If you're an investor, it's just a little pullback. Right? I mean, at this point, it's a little pullback. Who cares? If you're a trader, it looks more two sided and it's probably going to give you some sort of two sided action as a result. So please view it from that perspective. Yes, two sided action short term, longer term, you know, intermediate term, weekly bars. At this point, it doesn't mean anything. So, all right. Okay, um, I think that's uh, probably it. I think that's a good wrap. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit early tonight, but uh, I don't see any questions. And let me check real quick just to make sure before I cut this off. Tomorrow is going to be a big day with uh, the ECB and the fact that it comes out uh, before we get trading. Uh, that will make it uh, difficult for this market, whichever way it breaks, right? makes it hard to uh
to get a sustained uh, trade back the other way once it breaks. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for joining me. Have a, have a good night. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow night, and we'll see what the ECB does to us. Take care, folks. Good night.